yeah, this team could be a problem. Or it could have problems. Hello, Emmett Ryan from Ball in Europe here. Thanks for joining us once again. Where in this video, we're going to be talking about the big, big changes in Partizan, all the new players that have come in, what that involves, and what we can expect really from Partizan this coming season in EuroLeague. Before we get into that, a big thanks to all of you for tuning in. If you have, if this is your first time here, please subscribe. If you have, have been here before and aren't subscribed already, please subscribe anyway. It all really helps the channel. And of course, we do videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're also back very active on the site now. Uh, we always hit a bit of a dull period there from the end of EuroLeague until really now. Basically, we had a lot of stuff going on in the background because we're changing a few things up. But we're back. We're back powerful and strong. I was doing some scheduling there earlier. It's all a bit wild. But we have a lot, a lot of content coming for you all. So please check out this uh, website a lot. Check out, check out this YouTube a lot. Sorry, check out the website a lot. And now, let's get to Partizan. So, there's so many new players. I'm pulling the phone out for this one so I can actually look up the roster. So we're going to go through it in three groups, guards, forwards, centers. So the guards lineup is Frank Intelkina from France, Ify Lundberg, Karlik Jones, Vanya Marankovic, Dwayne Washington Jr. and Arijan Lakic. And I like the guards, simple as. Uh, like obviously we'll have questions about Frank, but I think there's a lot to come from him. Karlik Jones is my favorite signing of the lot here. Don't be wrong, I don't, I don't necessarily think he's the best player of the guards, but what he brings in terms of veteran and now in terms of his experience across the world and also just his mentality as a baller this is a great great signing for partisan i think if he lundberg again the mentality the talent a lot there and of course marinkovic already with partisan uh, he's the club captain for this year and he's got the leadership qualities i think to do it so the guards i'm loving basically i'm loving the guard situation forwards you got Isaac Bong, yeah, Bong, Bonga. Wow, I really bubbled that. Sorry, sorry Isaac. Uh, Alexis Pokievsky, Mitar Bosna Yakovic, Isaiah Mike, Sterling Brown, and Mario Nakic. Not as much as I like the guards, but I still like this a lot. Poku, I think, is going to fit really well into a Zoc team. Uh, Banga, he's a guy who knows his job really well, is good, is, is, is delivers, and he brings the effort. Sterling Brown as well, quite you know, useful player to have there. The area I have the most questions with is the five, the centers. So they are Brandon Davies, Tyreek Jones, and Balza Koprivica. Uh, uh, and I'm going to, sorry for mispronouncing Balza's surname there. My pronunciation of Balkan names is getting better. It's still terrible, let's be honest here. So, but Balza is going to be the big, biggest question mark here for most people. I'm hoping for a big step forward for, for him this year. Like, he obviously has had some issues with health, but also, really, we're just getting on the floor. I think we're going to have to see a lot of him this year, really, in order for him to make that jump forward. So, hopefully, he'll get that level. Tyreek Jones showed, you know, potential in FS to really be a player at this level, but it's a big step up for him to now basically be potentially, like, the guy at the five for, for Partizan. And I say potentially the guy at the five because Brandon Davies, I'm a huge Brandon Davies fan. I loved his game for a long, long time. But the last two seasons, he hasn't looked at the player that, you know, was the guy, basically. And I think if anyone can get him back to normal, it's Zach. Don't get me wrong. But it's a huge, huge ask, really, here to get that bit of basketball out of Brandon Davies off the floor. He's going to be a great leader, though. Great presence in the locker room. So, overall, I'm very happy with the roster. My big question mark is around the five. It is a soluble question, though. It isn't a problem that they can't deal with. Uh, but um, let's get to the bigger issue here, which is the sheer amount of new guys. So roster turnover is always an issue. and It's going to be more of an issue for a partisan, shall we say, than for more of the bigger clubs. That said, the team that won your league last year, Panathinaikos, had enormous roster turnover year on year there. And uh, so it's not like it's unthinkable for a team to get it together uh, in EuroLeague with a radically changed roster. Your issue essentially is having time for the players to gel, time to get it together, time to really work out how they work best together. And obviously the longer you have more guys getting familiar with each other's games, the better that tends to work out. For Partizan, obviously, like most of the guys who are going to be starting or playing heavy minutes weren't playing there last year it's, oh, and weren't playing together anywhere last year either. So that's the biggest challenge I look at here when it comes to roster turnover is 
working out the best ways and the best rotations really to get the most out of the overall you know roster here the the full the full the full roster like to get as much as you can out of this 15 ma 15 men i i mean as 15 guys go it's a good 15 guys to have uh, i think it's a pretty good roster my question essentially is you know, I think of some of the older Milano teams when they had those crazy turnovers. Although typically, as in turnovers of of of, of uh, personnel, uh, not turnovers on the floor. Uh, although the, those per personnel turnovers tended to lead to massive amounts of turnovers on the floor. Uh, they, you know, I'm kind of going. They had a lot of issues gelling. I suppose the one big positive, though, the reason I'm not as worried is I'm not seeing a situation where there's only one ball to go around, as in that there's too many guys who need that ball in their hands to be an impact. I think we've got enough guys here who can play off ball effectively uh, to not make that be as big an issue. That's one of the reasons I love the Bonga signing. He can do so much off ball. Uh, you know, he's going to be very useful there. Poku as well is going to be fine in that, in that role. And so, yeah, I think you're going to have enough there for it to work, but it is going to be a lot of work to get it to work, if that makes sense. So, yeah, on the whole, roster turnover, that's the big question mark here for what is going to happen. Because there's a lot of good names here. There's a lot of good ballers. and But there aren't a lot of them who played with each other on the regular basis in recent times at all. So let's get to the question you really want to know is, how far can Barda Partizan bring this? Well, it's Zelko Abradovic, and it's got uh, Partizan fans at his back. And I suppose I'm going to go to the Partizan fans first, uh, and you might go, what? It's like, yep, let's, let's just go straight in. That fan base is electric. It's brilliant. It's like one of the reasons people make trips in Europe to go see a game, because they want to experience being there with all those Partizan fans, making all that noise as games go on. But it wasn't like they were, you know, a team that was making the most of that home advantage last season. And a lot of that came down to sort of roster issues and not having the right guys. We all know about Hazaka and Kabaklo didn't exactly get along, would be one way of putting it. But you look at it now and it's like, right, you know, you've got a whole bunch of guys who are going to be going into this, getting used to obviously having it at their back. Uh, and you start to think, right, if these fellas start to feel it and feel it early, that home advantage could really be a big boost. And when it comes to making the top 10, which is getting into the play-ins, that's a very vital aspect. Obviously, the other goal is top six. Now, top six, I think, is an enormous ask this season. There are a couple of teams who I think were in the top six last year who probably won't be. Uh, Barcelona, uh, I'm once again going to be a bit low on this year because it's almost become my annual thing to be low on Barcelona if they're going to be good. Uh, although I've been low on them as well, just generally quite a bit in recent years. And, you know, I look at that, I go, there's a chance to make it in the top six. Uh, like, there are certainly teams who are going to struggle more to make the play-ins, never mind the playoffs, than last year. But top six is a huge ask, but not unthinkable. And, of course, top six means you're in the playoffs for sure. Top ten, I will go out on a limb and straight out say I will be very surprised if Partizan don't make at least the play-in with this roster. It is going to need some kind of horrific meltdown for them to not have enough with this talent, with these sort of guys who know how to lead on the floor, uh, especially in tough road environments. Like, that's, again, one of the reasons I love this Carlick Jones signing. It's going to take an awful lot of disasters for this to not work out uh, to be at least a top 10 team. So top 10 is play-ins, but so obviously the play-ins, though, come with their own layers. There's there's the seven, there's a 6-7 game, uh, sorry, there's a 7-8 game, 6-7, M8. There's a 7-8 game and there's a 9-10 game, and of course then there's the loser plays the winner. I think they can definitely get top 8 with this roster, which guarantees them at least two games, or at least, you know, one game to get straight into the playoffs. Can they get top uh, can they get like the seventh spot doable yeah uh, so I think this is a roster that's built to get to the playoffs there will be other teams who will think oh, like they also are built to get to the playoffs this is the, this competition is getting deeper and deeper every year uh, EuroLeague like we've even seen it with sort of you know the comings and goings from the NBA to EuroLeague this year while everyone's talking about Yabu Selly and don't forget to check that video out uh, like you know going over we've seen some major players come back from the NBA already this summer, Poku being one of them, uh, but Vizenkov gone to Olympiakos. And I look at that and I kind of go, like that's gonna just add more and more and more to the depth. And so yeah, for partisan of a roster this strong, 
playoffs are on the cards. So right, they get to the, let's say they get through the play-ins, they're in the playoffs. That means they're playing a one or two seed, based on my theories. Uh, and honestly, it comes down to who. Uh, like, I feel if, say, power in that spot, it's going to be a tough ask. Real Madrid are in that spot. It's going to be entertaining. Uh, let's say that. But, like, there's other teams as well who could easily get a top two spot that might end up against Partizan in that playoff scenario. Like, their goal really, to me, should be to try and crack that top six. That'll be a more winnable playoff scenario. Because your goal is to basically have it come down to as much, you know, one-off situations as possible. Uh, because, obviously, over the course of a league season, I don't see Partizan being the best team in a straight league calendar table. But once you're a knockout ball, that's a different game. You've got that home court. You can do stuff with that. You get one win on the road in the playoffs. You can do stuff with that. You get into a Final Four, which I would like to see being in Belgrade, but I'm, and I've also done a video about that. You, you're increasing chances again. But what you want is essentially to have as much be down to its one-on-one -one situation game-wise. So, yeah, can they win the League? It is plausible. Do I think it will happen? No, I don't. Uh, do I think this team can go to the final four? Potentially. But, uh, they, the, so, but the real hard ceiling I'm going to give is in the one I think what they will do is they will be a playoff team this year. Uh, which, you know, some of you might agree, some might disagree. You tell me in the comments. Uh, so there'll be a playoff team by the planes. That's my prediction for Partizan. Uh, you tell me what you think is going to happen. Uh, leave the comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll be back on Monday with a new video. And this is going great. I'm having a lot of fun. And I want to keep you along having fun. See you soon.